In April of 2024, on the last day of the first championship in Houston, FIRST released the trailers for the upcoming 2024-2025 season of FIRST. The overall theme of the season is called FIRST Die. The FIRST LEGO League season in particular is titled Submerged. During the season, participants will take a look at life beneath the surface of the ocean. Included in the teaser for Submerged is a preview of the new FIRST LEGO League Challenge field for next season. Here's the video for those who haven't seen it yet. This video gave us a quick look at the missions and field for next season. The field looks like a stylized bathymetric map of the ocean floor. One of the things we see is that the field has two launch areas again, with a home base on either side of the table, just like it did the previous two seasons. This allows teams to launch their robot closer to the missions they are trying to complete, making all mission models and the entire field more accessible. And again, it'll allow more team members to actively participate in the matches. In general, the mission models appear to be spaced further apart. This will be helpful for teams that build their robots from the Spike Prime build instructions, for example, as they will have more space to maneuver around the field. But there might be a caveat, which we'll explain later in this video. What is noticeable is that there seems to be no line following lines this season. We do see a couple stop lines that might be helpful in aligning the robot in front of three mission models, though. We also noticed that there is only three obvious target areas in the middle of the field this year. As we have seen in previous seasons, this season seems to use one color Lego piece to suggest the part of the mission model that can be interacted with to activate the model. Last year in Masterpiece, it was orange, and in this coming season, the activation color appears to be yellow. The last time we saw this action color was in 2021 with the Cargo Connect season. Similar to last season, we also see the rigid loop Lego piece being used again on the game pieces that will most likely need to be collected and delivered to different areas on the field. These rigid loops will make them easier to pick up. With these basic reactions out of the way, let's break down the mission models on next season's field that were discovered through this video. We will be going clockwise from the left red launch area around the outer edges of the field and then eventually circle to the inside mission models to keep things organized. Let's start off with a mission model on the field that we think represents a coral reef. We believe there are three parts to this challenge. First, we see a looped scuba diver minifigure hanging off of the beam on the right. Most likely, the scuba diver will start in this position and need to be picked up and delivered somewhere else on the field. For the second challenge, we think teams will have to upright the corals on the white horizontal beam by pushing the yellow activator bar in front of the mission model down and in. For the third challenge, we believe that the long coral column will start laying down horizontally on the mat, and the challenge will be to lift the corals into the vertical position and hooking its loop onto the yellow axle. The next mission model shows a shark on a platform. We call this either the shark or the marine rescue and rehabilitation mission. The shark is not attached to the platform, and it looks like we have to push down the yellow activating lever on the side of the mission model to raise the back of the platform to let the shark slide down into the home area. 
From there, it might need to be transported somewhere else, but we can't exactly tell where from the future. We are not exactly sure what the next mission model with the green vertical pillars and yellow axles sticking out in front is, but we think this model could be a trash collector and represent ocean cleanup. We think that the yellow plate in the back needs to be pulled up, which in turn tilts the gray plate with the different colored items in the front inward, representing the collection of trash floating on the ocean's surface. In addition, it is very likely that one of the looped game pieces will need to be hooked up onto the yellow axle of this mission model. Moving further to the right along the northern wall, we come across a small looped mission model that appears to be loose on a brown and gray platform. The platform itself appears to be in a fixed position. This might represent an anchor on a chain when hanging in the air. We believe that this game piece will need to be collected and transported somewhere else on the field. Next, in the center of the northern wall, we are seeing the return of a cooperation mission model spanning both tables. A submersible hangs from the two long parallel axles. Its passenger is the beloved FLL chicken. It looks like the yellow activator bar on the black pillar of the mission model will need to be lifted up until it latches into place. This raises the support for the black axle, letting the submarine slide down to the other side. We think that teams will be competing to race to the mission model to be the first one to raise the bar and move the submersible to the other side for extra points. We think this will be scored very similarly to raising the flag on the bridge back in City Shaper. To the right of the cooperation mission is a green circular mission model which looks like a sonar. To score points, the robot will probably have to move the yellow lever clockwise from the 1 o'clock starting position to the 11 o'clock end position which will flip up the dark green beams in the middle. The mission model in the northeast corner of the field looks like the head of an orca whale. In the video, we can see that the head pivots and the mouth opens when it's in the horizontal position. There is a yellow plate on the bottom of the model that probably needs to be pushed in in order to tilt the head. The whale looks like it might be preloaded with a number of krill or shrimp that spill out when the mouth opens. We think that these may need to be collected to deliver somewhere else on the field. Just south of the whale is a small looped seaweed mission model. The seaweed itself appears to be attached to the field with a white looped piece inside. We think this looped game piece represents a plastic bag that got entangled into the seaweed. The robot will probably need to pull it out and deliver it and hang the bag onto the yellow axle of the ocean cleanup mission model which we looked at earlier. The next mission model just north of the blue launch area is a sailboat that sits on a blue platform. It seems to be raised above the mat on a blue 4-bar linkage, possibly representing a boat riding on a wave. Depending on the starting position of the sailboat, we think the goal is either to collapse the 4-bar linkage and lower the sailboat into calmer waters, or raise the 4-bar linkage and raise the boat. The mission could also represent high and low tides. Along the south wall is the next mission model, which we think consists of the ship as well as both docks near the launch areas. We believe that the ship must be moved from the dock by the red launch area and then latched onto the yellow beams by the dock near the blue launch area. The ship also has a larger holding area which we think is a good target area to be filled with either one of the looped game pieces or some of the shrimp or krill. Near the dock by the blue launch area is a mission model that appears to consist of four crab cages interconnected by pivots like a snake cube puzzle. One of the cages is latched onto the blue platform on the map, but the rest of the cages can be twisted and turned in different ways. Some of the configurations we've come up with are all four cages stacked on top of each other, or a 2x2 two two stack. We think there might be different points that can be scored for each of the different configurations possible. Moving to the center of the map on the red half of the field, we see a larger mission model that looks like a broken apart shipwreck. At the stern, or the aftmost part of the shipwreck, are yellow levers that look like they may need to be pushed up to raise the shipwreck's main mast and crow's nest. There seems to be a large octopus inside this part of the mission model, but we think that that's just there for decoration. At the other part of the shipwreck is a yellow lever that needs to be swung around to release the model of what looks like an anglerfish. Finally, there is also a yellow axle with a ball sticking out of the mission model. We aren't sure if the mermaid figurehead can be moved by activating that yellow axle or if the mermaid figurehead is just an adornment of the ship. The yellow axle could also be a target where the looped scuba diver minifigure or the looped anchor can be hung. There is also a target circle by this part of the shipwreck which could make a great target area for either of the looped game pieces. What do you think? In the center of the blue half of the field is a large structure with an octopus hanging from an axle of the mission model. We think this model is similar to the helicopter mission that we saw during Cargo Connect. There is a yellow push bar on the front that needs to be pushed in in order to release the octopus onto the mat. 
closer to the end of the video, the octopus is shown in the large target area behind the mission model, so most likely it will need to be moved to that target area for extra points after the octopus was released. Let's move on to the smaller, loose game pieces in this year's game. In total, there seems to be 5 krill or shrimp game pieces. In the video, two are shown on the red half of the field and three in the blue half, but we're not exactly sure if they will start lying out on the map or in the team's home areas. We think the shrimp will need to be delivered to either the whale or to the boat. Logically, it would make sense to feed the krill to the whale, but in the video it's a bit confusing as the shrimp spill out of the whale's head when it's lowered onto the mat. We can't really tell whether the mouth is open when the whale is vertical to drop the krill into. Based on our experience, it would require more precision than usual to drop the krill into such a small target. In the introduction of our analysis, we said there seems to be more space to navigate around the field this year. However, there are three small coral game pieces placed on the map. Two are in the red half in small circles between the coral reef and the shipwreck, and one is on the blue half of the field in a small circle between the sailboat and the octopus mission models. Similar to how we should avoid touching corals in the real world, we believe that these will serve as obstacles for the robots as they navigate between missions. The last mission model looks like a multi-corer used for seafloor sampling. We believe that the mission model will start out in one of the home bases and the mission will be to deliver it standing upright to the target circle located in the coral reef. As in previous seasons, there are six precision tokens shown in the video. We don't think you will lose any precision tokens if you move the coral game pieces out of their small circles, you will probably just not score any points if they're not in their designated positions at the end of the match. All of these missions sure look exciting, and there seem to be some new challenges and twists. What seems to be missing from previous years is an innovation project model. Either way, this concludes our breakdown of Submerged, the 2024 first LEGO League Challenge game reveal. What do you think of this season's theme and the missions that were shown? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. We will see you again in August for the season kickoff. Best of luck to all teams participating in the upcoming season.